I've got about four pounds of some terrific beef flank and ribs that I'm gonna be cooking up on the Weber kettle. So flank and ribs. If you've never done flank and ribs, you don't even know what those are. If you look here, you'll see these are the ends of the rib bones. Flank and ribs are just ribs which are cut across the bone. So you get these strips of rib meat with little bits of bone. They can turn out incredibly tender. If you just give them the time to cook, they don't actually take too long, but you wanna season them properly. And that's what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our rub ready. So the rub is sort of a hybrid. It's a mix of a rub and a marinade, creating sort of a paste that's gonna go on these flank and ribs. We're gonna start with two teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of granulated garlic, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of ground black pepper, and half a teaspoon of turmeric, 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 however you want to pronounce it. Before I add the wet ingredients in here, I just want to sort of mix these up a little bit, just get them slightly blended. Now to this, I'm going to add maybe two or three tablespoons of olive oil. And we're going to add one tablespoon of maple syrup. Give us a little sweetness in here. I'm just going to start mixing this together here, creating our nice little paste. Really want to make sure you get all the clumps of the dry ingredients incorporated here. That's looking good. Let's have a tiny little taste, just see. That is nice. Hint of sweetness from that maple syrup, but those great flavors of the spices in there. It's gonna be good. All right, let's get this on our ribs. So all we're gonna do is just start getting this on our ribs. And we'll be getting in there with gloved hands and making sure everybody gets rubbed with this. Just wanna kinda of spoon it out a little more evenly first. The nice thing about these beef flank and ribs is there's a lot of meat surface area to accept seasoning. Let's get in here and get everybody rubbed down. Flip them over. Get both sides rubbed. Get everybody mixed up in there. They're all friends. I don't know if I mentioned, but these are gonna go in the refrigerator overnight in some Ziploc bags just to really accept all these seasonings. Give us great flavors tomorrow out on the Weber kettle. There we go, our beef flank and ribs, all rubbed up, ready to go in the refrigerator. That's where they're going, and I'll see you tomorrow out at the Weber kettle. All right, our beef flank and ribs have been soaking in the flavors in that hybrid rub marinade overnight in the refrigerator. In a couple minutes, we're gonna get the Weber kettle going, get them out on there. But first, I wanna get a glaze made that's gonna go on these ribs at the very end. We're not even gonna glaze them when they're on the kettle. We're gonna glaze them once they're off and they come in. This is gonna be a ginger honey glaze and we're starting with a quarter cup of honey. To this, we're gonna add one tablespoon of crushed ginger. Last ingredient, two tablespoons of soy sauce. And we're just gonna get in here and mix this together. Got to work it slowly at first because you have that really loose soy sauce and the very thick honey. Oh, it smells really good with that ginger. That's looking pretty good there. Just scrape the sides, make sure everybody is into the mix. Take a little taste. I like that. I think honey and ginger go so well together. That soy sauce there gives you a little bit of saltiness, a little bit more body in the flavor. This is gonna go in the refrigerator and it's gonna wait until our ribs are all done. So let's go ahead, get out there and get the kettle going. All right, the kettle is up to temp. Gonna to go ahead and start getting our flanking ribs on here. You can see that foil pouch there. That contains some small white potatoes that I cut into halves and thirds, and there's a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of uh, kosher salt on them, and that's just gonna start getting ready for some sriracha garlic mashed potatoes that we're gonna have with these flanken ribs. A little bit of a tight fit on some of these, but we'll make it work. Definitely find room for everybody. Nobody's getting left out of the party here. All right, we're gonna get our lid on and let these start cooking. 
My upper vent is set in about the two-thirds open position. And my bottom vent is fully open at this time. So the kettle temperature I'm going for today is somewhere between 225 and 250. Anywhere between 200 and 275 is going to be fine with me. I really want to do these sort of low and slow, really develop that tenderness. And it's probably going to take somewhere between two and four hours, probably closer in the two to three hour range for these flank and ribs. The way we're going to tell when these are done, it's just going to be tenderness like normally you would with beef ribs. These are just beef ribs cut a different way. And once those potatoes are done, we'll take those off, get them inside, and get those garlic sriracha mashed potatoes made. So I'll bring you back here in a couple hours when it's time to check these. All right, we've been going two hours. Let's check our flank and ribs. Those are looking really, really good. Just want to check some for tenderness here. Yeah, we're, we're probing pretty darn tender here. Got great color on these, great smell coming off of them. I rotated the potatoes just about an hour ago just so that package wasn't the same way the entire time, but these ribs are ready to come off at two hours. So let's get them off here, get them inside get our sriracha garlic mashed potatoes made, and have a taste. All right, our little potatoes are all ready. All we're gonna do is just sort of mash these roughly. I'm not looking for any creamy consistency. I want a really sort of chunky, rustic mashed potato that we're gonna be making here. So we're just gonna take a big fork, start mashing these. Break down the big chunks before we add some of our butter and our other seasonings and flavors here. I'm going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of butter here to start. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of milk now. I have four set aside that's kind of warmed up a little bit so it's not cold. We'll add about half of it. I'm just going to mix this in. And if you don't like potato skins, you can peel your potatoes. I love potato skins and sort of these rustic mashed potatoes. Now I'm gonna add maybe one more tablespoon of milk here. That's looking good. Time for the garlic, and this is one tablespoon of minced garlic. Now I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of sriracha. I'm switching over to a spoon here to help mix this in. Now I'm just gonna give this maybe less than a teaspoon of salt, really just salt to whatever you want. We'll give it a taste in a second here. Stir it up again. Everybody mixed in. All right, let's give this a taste. Mmm. Nice little hit from that sriracha. The garlic's in there. I don't think it needs any more salt. Let's move on to checking out our flank and ribs. All right, here are some of our flank and ribs. They're just looking great. I haven't even glazed them yet, but the color on them just is terrific. Really good, you can see where the bone sections are, so it gives you that idea what they mean when they say flank, and they're cut straight across the bone, so you have long lengths of the meat. These just look great. Let's get some glaze on them. That ginger honey glaze that we made. Yeah, my cutting board's getting messy, so what? There they are, our glazed up flank and ribs. I think we should plate this all up with some of those sriracha garlic mashed potatoes and have a taste. All right, so here is our plate of these glazed flank and ribs with our garlic sriracha mashed potatoes, put a little bit more sriracha on top and some chives. I, I don't know what else to say here. It just, it's kind of really pretty. I'm afraid to eat it, but you know what? That's not gonna stop me because it's time to taste. All right, the first thing I'm going for is just some of these garlic sriracha mashed potatoes or sriracha garlic mashed potatoes, whichever you want to call it. Here we go. Those are good. Those are really, really good. Just be mindful if you take a bite of the part that has a dollop of sriracha on top, you're getting like a triple kick of sriracha. Here's some without the sriracha on top. Mm, that's a much milder kick but it is definitely there in those mashed potatoes, and boy, does it taste good. In fact, I'm going for a triple taste of potatoes before we even get to the ribs. I'm making those again. Now, time for the flank and ribs. There's many different ways to eat flank and ribs. You can cut them up with a knife and fork. I'm just gonna pick it up, take a bite. Here we go. Mmm. I always talk about how I like there to be a little bit of a bite in the ribs so it doesn't fall completely off the bone. 
Beef ribs, I tend to like a little bit more fall off the bone, but look at that nice little bite right off that rib bone, that section right there. Oh man, these just have fantastic flavor. Really tender, really juicy, and when you think about it, two hours of cook time, that's it. No wrapping, nothing. The kettle went almost exclusively between 220 and 235 the entire time I was watching the temperature. And if you can keep it in that really sort of low and slow range, I really think it does help develop the tenderness and the flavor here without overcooking, drying it out quickly, because these are thin pieces of meat when you look at them, but boy, are they good. Mm. So if you've never made flank and ribs, maybe you've seen them in the store and just didn't have any idea what to do with them, give them a couple hours, 200, 225, 250 degrees, let them develop slowly, get that tenderness, get that flavor. You're gonna have some terrific beef ribs that don't take five hours to cook. They're really, really good.